Hi guys, and welcome back to Studio One with me, Gregor. So last time we talked about drag and drop, the core principle of Studio One. And today I want to talk about the browser with you guys, which is really enabling this entire drag and drop philosophy in my mind. It's really one of the most powerful Studio One features and sometimes overlooked. And hence why I think it's really important to spend at least two episodes on the browser and really talk you through it because that's where you're going to start all of your projects. This is where you're going to drag and drop your ideas back and forth. So it's best if you accustom yourself to the browser as quickly as possible. So in the first part today, we want to talk about the different tabs that you're going to see when you open up the browser and make you familiar with those. And then in the second part, I want to give you a couple of real life examples and show you how you can get the most out of the browser. So let's take a look. So first up is the Instruments tab. This is where you find all the included instruments that come with Studio One Artist and Professional, namely the Impact XT, which is our very capable drum sampler, the Mai Tai, a classic, uh, very great sounding polyphonic virtual analog synth. Next up is the Mojito, which is a monophonic virtual analog synth. And then we have the Presence XT, which got a complete overhaul, just like the Impact XT and Sample 1 XT with version 4. It's a highly capable sample player, and it comes with a variety of super realistic, great sounding instruments. And last but not least, we have the Sample 1 XT, which is a sample player and recorder, so you can actually record your own audio into it. And then you have a world of possibilities with time stretching, pitch shifting to your liking, modulating in any way you can imagine. And I can't encourage you enough to get creative with it. All the other folders that you see right here are basically VST plugins from uh, third parties that you can of course use in Studio One if you have the artist version and the VST AU rewire support add-on or if you have the professional version then you have full access to all kinds of VST2, VST3 and AU plugins as well. So that's uh, my library right here. Next up are the effects and as you can see I made a bunch of folders here that I named myself and sorted myself just to get through my infinite amount of plugins that I have. I'm sure that a couple of you can relate and <laughs> as you can see you can rename your folders and just drag any plugin to any folder that you want. You can mark your favorites and also if you don't want to do any of that we have an amazing search function so if you want to add an EQ or something to your channel for instance you just hit the plus the search is immediately in focus and when I type EQ I immediately get my pro EQ or other EQs. Um, as you can see it's not case sensitive so even though I didn't type pro EQ I'm getting the pro EQ as my first choice and that is so convenient for quickly loading your plugins. Now obviously there's so much more that I could say here, for example about effects chains which are basically a preset sequence of several inserts, um, really useful if you want to recall for example your favorite vocal settings where you always use an EQ and then a compressor and a de and these kind of things or the mix engine effects which is a completely different and unique topic that really stands on its own but we're going to talk about mix effects in another episode later. So the next tab is the loops tab and you should see plenty of loops right here uh, depending on which version of Studio One you have installed. If you don't see any loops please go to the Studio One menu tab and then go to Studio One installation and just confirm really quickly that you actually have the loop libraries installed. As soon as you have those installed they should definitely show up there. Now these loops are perfect for anybody who wants to work pattern based. Um, let's say electronic music producers are going to love this. All of these are time coded perfectly. You can make them faster, you can make them way slower, they're gonna work every time and this gives you just so many more applications for each and every loop. Next up is the files tab and that to me is one of the most powerful features of the browser. You can just drag and drop and exchange ideas back and forth. You can access entire song files from there. Um, you have so many possibilities to work creatively that I really need to dedicate an entire episode to that. So make sure that you also tune in to the second part of my browser series here. I'm sure it's gonna blow your mind. Up next is the Clouds tab and the Cloud is really amazing because it just contributes once more to this immersive experience of Studio One. You don't have to leave Studio One whether you're songwriting, mixing or mastering and now you don't even have to leave it if you require any kind of add-on content from the internet. Take the Personal Shop for instance. All our extensions, loops and sounds, plugins, even full versions and upgrades of Studio One are directly available from within the software itself. 
Personas Exchange is also really cool because you find so many interesting effects chains and grooves and macros from other users that you can directly drag and drop into your sessions. Rest assured that I'm gonna talk plenty about effects chains, grooves and macros in the episodes to come. Another really interesting thing is the SoundCloud integration and it works in a bi-directional manner, which is quite unique. So not only can I export all my stuff via drag and drop directly into my SoundCloud account and get it uploaded, but I can also access all the tracks that I already uploaded or even the tracks of the people I'm following and download those into my session. That's really next level SoundCloud integration, guys, and it gives you so many opportunities when it comes to collaborations, it's not even funny. Last but not least, there's the pool, and the pool is gonna show you all of the referenced audio files of your currently opened song. The pool makes it really easy to replace any samples with other files that you can simply point to. And also the record takes tab is a really appreciated little feature. Here you can find all of the takes that you recorded um, during your session and it makes it really easy to recall the original files once stuff has gotten a bit too chaotic in comping. And trust me, if you record like 140 takes that can easily happen and this will literally save your life in that situation. All right, guys, so that wraps up the first episode of my two-part browser series. Make sure to also tune in for the second part where we're gonna get a lot more practical and find out together why the browser truly is one of Studio One's most powerful features. See you then.